Hey, hello and welcome and a happy, happy new year to you. I hope your uh, 2019 has started really well and as you had planned. So today we are going to talk about 10 mind shifts that you want to start 2019 with. And yes, get a cup of tea or coffee and let's get chatting. All right, coming to the 10 big mind shifts that you want to start 2019 with. The first one is about accepting who you are, being you. And we all know that there is a lot of pressure sometimes, you know, peer pressure, pressure from family, pressure from colleagues at work, of who you are and how you want to project yourself. But I think the biggest change that we need to look into in 2019 is how we can be just us. And you know, the goals that I make, the plans that I make should be for me and nobody else. And we all know it isn't very easy because for all of us, we carry a lot of baggage. We carry a lot of weight from the previous years and we just keep on moving on, hoping one day, you know, with time, things will get sorted out. Well, wait no more because this is the year you need to start with a clean blank slate. And that means having to accept who you are and all that you carry with you. And that's it. That's how we start. So again, things are very different depending on the individual you are. Find out what, what works for you and how you can make peace with yourself. Take some time off, maybe an hour on your weekend or whenever you are entry and just sort it out in your head and then don't look back. Just, just let's move forward because you know what? It is the new year. All right, let's move to point number two. And that is creating the right environment for you to succeed. No matter how many plans we make and whether we have the vision board, we have multiple other things going for us, you will only succeed if you have the right environment set for you to succeed. So if you're the kind of person who has 10 things you want to get done this year, but you are continuously doubting yourself and your ability, and then you hear a lot of remarks about your, you know, within your friend and families, and they keep on saying, oh no, this is not something you can get it done. And then that sort of gets to you in your head and you think, maybe they are right, maybe this is not what I'm meant to do. So that is the reason we want to ensure that we have the right environment for us so we can succeed. And yeah, if that means getting rid of some people in your life, so be it. Because this is the year 2019 when you actually want things to get done. So let's get cracking. So creating the right environment is obviously there are two sides to the coin. One is your physical environment as in where you thrive, where you, where you live, where you spend most of your time. And the other is obviously your headspace or your mental or your mental space, right? So first, let's say we talk about the physical space you are in. You want to make sure the amount of time that you spend the most at, it could be work, it could be home, wherever it is, you want to make sure it's very comfortable for you. It sort of gives you a feeling of being rooted, being grounded, being confident, motivated, and also feeling secure about who you are and about yourself. And there could be multiple ways you can do that. So if you're trying to um, redo the desk at your work make sure you have smaller items that you can actually put at your workspace um, you can have like some quotes some motivational pictures it could be something personal maybe a vacation you took a year ago or it could be something more like a vision board the place that you want to visit in the future 2019 perhaps so when you walk into the space every morning it feels like who you are and not like I am here because I don't have any other choice because like I have to come to work. When you enter that workspace with a negative mindset and you hate it every, every single second of the day, you won't be able to thrive there. So even if you're in a setup where things are not really working for you, I will make the most out of it because you're already there and probably spending eight to 10 hours there already. So again, rethink what you're doing, how you want to look at your workspace and then just make sure you're very comfortable. Right, so that's about the workspace. If you come home and or you spend the you know maximum amount of time at home, you could be a stay-at-home mom, you could be someone who works out of home, who runs a business out of home. You have to make sure your workspace at home or, or maybe you just work out of the couch or the dining table, whatever it is, your home has to be very comforting and welcoming for you. It has to be a place when you walk into the end of the day uh, it should be feel like, oh my God, the whole day was worth it. No matter what you went through the day, whether it's, you know, something that you enjoyed or something that you even didn't enjoy. Because when we come home, this is the space we, where we reset ourselves. So every morning when you wake, wake up, you want to have that positive vibe. You want to be rested, 
refreshed and looking forward to the next day. All right, the second part obviously is your headspace. And no matter how, how well your physical space is, this is something you have to be very, very careful about because it impacts and influences you the most in every decision you take, the vibe you set for the day or the year, or how basically you get things accomplished and done. But again, the goal is set the right environment inside, within you, to ensure you can sustain it. For me, this is something very, very simple that I do. Um, I think I just try to listen to a lot of podcasts or a lot of YouTube videos that focus on positivity. And even when I'm not feeling positive, um, I'll just watch them. And most of the times what these people will talk about and say sometimes like there'll be a point that hits you home and you're like, yeah, maybe I didn't think of it before. So I think if you're trying to attain a mindset, um, mental shift, it's the easiest thing we can do without spending a dime. And you just listen to people who have already either um, fought the battle before you or already know what they're doing or they're just talking about their own life and doing a video and that's something I really enjoy and it works for me not only for my uh, mental health or mental space, it equally works for other side of it which we'll talk about in a minute. It could be just, you know, I want to be healthy this year and I would watch a lot of videos on people talking about good eating, good health and things like that and I can sustain my, my goals for that particular category for a longer period of time. Right, now coming to the third point, it's about having a growth mindset and I do have a video which I did about growth mindset before and I'm sure I link it down below but I think the most important thing you have to understand um, is a person who has a growth mindset is somebody who is willing to evolve, who is willing to learn and the person who knows that with time and the, with the willingness to learn and having the right set of motivation and being inspired, you can actually do different things or what you have your mindset at. Against those people who have a fixed mindset and who will say, this can't be done because I don't have it in me. Oh, I can't do this because I've never done it before. How do you know it's going to work for you? Because you don't seem like the person who can get it done. Those are the people you don't really need to listen to. So you have to ensure that growth mindset is something that you are watering every day. And it could be done multiple ways. It could be just, you know, peeking inside yourself and seeing how you feel, what you want to do and just going for it. It can also mean constant pace of learning. And there are so many wonderful ways to learn in the internet these days. Like even if you're trying not to spend a buck, you can just read through a lot of papers, research papers, um, some maybe snippets of somebody's book. It could be multiple things, even watching and watching YouTube videos. Fourth point could be a very difficult point for you. I know it is for me because it is the art of saying no. I think over the time I have realized that I didn't want to say no to a lot of people or when friends rang up and said let's meet for lunch or dinner, I couldn't just say no because I thought they wouldn't understand and you know, I, if I said too much no, there wouldn't be any friends left for me. But over the time I have realized that if I really want to reach my goals and if I want to do what I want to do, time is the one thing that you want to protect. And another thing is your headspace because you put in so much work into, you know, getting the right, right vibe, um, right mindset. You don't want to lose it over some negative talk just because you agreed to go for that brunch. So um, if somebody really is your friend, the person gets it. I mean, you're probably not saying no throughout the entire year, but saying no once in a while is absolutely okay because they will get it if they really are meant to be in your life. If they're the kind of people who don't get it and it's like, oh, you didn't come for brunch, so we're not friends anymore, I would say you are rather lucky not having them in your life. So I think you have to make certain choices. Um, but yeah, I think say no. Say no to things that you cannot commit to, you know don't you don't have the time to. And the time that you get out of it by saying no, you want to ensure you put it to right use. Even if that means you're just you know, lounging in your balcony, reading a good book. I would say that is a better use of my time than going for dinner with 20 other people I don't want to be in the room in for. All right, point number five, find a hobby. And you know what is the most common thing when we are trying to say, oh, I don't have a hobby because where's the time? I don't have the time. I'm 
juggling so many things and I'm trying to do so many things. Yep, that's true. If you are a working person, you're probably a working mom, you have a family, kids, work life, everything to balance out with. I know, we don't have time. But there is something called Parkinson's law and you haven't heard about it, you should know that the amount of time that we give ourselves to complete a task is actually the time that will automatically fill up the task. So what I mean by that is, let's say I give myself one hour to write a blog post and then I know, well, I do have to write a blog post in one hour. So even if I could get the task and done in probably 30 minutes or 40 minutes. It probably doesn't happen because I'm so sure about the fact it's going to take me one hour to get it done. The time automatically is filled up and I do end up taking one hour to write that blog post. Which means mindset is so very important because you constantly have to rethink, reevaluate, and look at what you're doing and what is important to you. That is the most essential thing that probably we should look into this new year. So yeah, find a hobby. Find a hobby that refreshes you, that re-energizes you, that puts you into that state of flow. And that state of flow is nothing but being present and aware in the moment that you forget the count of time, the people, the place you are in. You like doing it so much that it's just, you just immerse yourself into it. And once you're done, when you come out of it, like maybe you like to paint. And when you're done with the painting, you come out thinking, wow, that was really nice. You're not only refreshed, you have that sense of fulfillment in you. You're happy because you have done something amazing that probably you were planning to do for the last six months. And that is something you want your hobby to be. Right, so point number six is taking care of your health. Now, did you know that of all the people who write New Year's resolutions, one third of the people do include something about health. I'm going to eat healthy or I'm going to exercise every day. And then most of the people don't end up keeping up their commitment. And so this year, when you write it down that you want to, you know, be healthy, um, you want to make sure you are not part of that other side of the table stats which fall off the table. You want to be part of that group who actually are successful at what they have planned and what they're implementing. So if health is part of your plan, then definitely, like I mentioned before, do something where you're not only motivated every day, you're thinking about it and you can sustain it. So health is not something that you do for a month or for a year. So you join a gym, go for 10 days, then don't look at it again. Not going to work. So are your healthy eating habits. So you can't eat, be eating fruits and veggies for the first week of January. And then by the time is, you know, 15th or 20th of the month, you completely forget about it. So we want to make sure that we have plans and that could be you can have a vision board. Now, if you really don't want to cut pictures out of magazines and put it on a board and then put it in front of your desk, well, there are other ways to do it as well. You can use Pinterest and you can create a board that you can keep in your private settings. So it's only for you and nobody else is looking into it. And then you can just create the board that you want to create. So it can involve um, pictures of people eating healthy or um, healthy food, maybe salads, smoothies, uh, the way you want to live your life. It could be a lot of outdoor exercising, hiking, traveling in places where you can go for a run. So it could be multiple ways that you set up your vision board. The other way would be once your vision board is set, you can look at it, you know, scroll through it every day or you can simply take a screenshot of it and put it as your desktop background. And that would be a wonderful way to look at it even subconsciously because even when you're working on your laptop, you are basically looking at it probably more than, probably more than once. So again, sustain yourself, ensure that you feel that motivation. All right, so point number seven is being present and being more aware. And there are so many studies that emphasizes on um, meditation, on being present. Now, it doesn't have to be something like you have to do it very traditionally, but it could be something like when you drive to work, you can put in the nicest music that you want to listen to, and you can just be in that zone. Be present, be the fact that you're driving, think about yourself and be grateful for what you have. I think just meditation in any format even if it's something that you do when you cook it could mean different things for different people and how they do it what i find it's um, surprisingly what changes me is when i'm trying meditation in my own way it does make me much more content it also makes me aware of what i'm doing it's not like 
being in an automated mode. So it's not like I'm, I'm just going through my day, I'm going through my life. And honestly, I don't even know what I have had for lunch today. So um, be present, be present not only for yourself, be present for your kids, be present for your friends. Don't keep on multitasking or looking somewhere else when you're talking to your kids at the end of the day. It could be also for your friend that really wanted to talk to you and when you finally found the time to meet him or her for over drink, over coffee, and then you're just not listening. You're like scrolling something on your phone while your friend is trying to get your attention. Um, that isn't being present at all. So present does not mean physically being there. It means uh, it means mentally and emotionally being there as well. I think being present will allow you to see that there are so many things we can still be grateful for. And like I always mention, a grateful heart can do wonders. It can heal you, it can motivate you, it can inspire you, and it can make you see the one that you have always wanted to see. You can see yourself. So point number eight is inspect and adapt, which means that yes, you have to look within yourself once in a while. Just because you wrote something on December 31st, 2018 does not mean you cannot change it, you, can, you cannot move things around and that is something that is written in stone. Obviously it's not for us, things change, plans change, suddenly you know you could be in a different job, you could be in a different relationship, you can move cities and countries, who knows what's coming. So you have to be always prepared for it. And one way to do it is just look into your goals once in a while. See what is working for you. Anything that you think does not have any value anymore or you don't want to pursue it as a New Year's goal, change it. Rewrite your goal, rewrite the action items against it and then just get going. Number nine, flush out the toxins. And I really mean it because we live in 2019 that is flooded with so many things in social media. And we're always wondering how is that they can always afford a fancy vacation or a beautiful house or that luxurious car. And you know, social media has a way of getting to us. And you don't want to be in that zone really for 2019 because enough is enough. And the easy way to get it done is delete the apps from your phone. I'm not asking you to delete your account. I mean, if you still want to look into Facebook, feel free to look at it. But the more you keep it in your phone as an app is you just mindlessly browse through it. Life is complex already. Life has so much going on. You do not want to expose yourself to in forums and mediums where things go negative for you. You want to stay as positive as possible and if that means reducing your screen time, if that means deleting those apps, go ahead and do it. And if you feel the app is so important for you, you can always reinstall it back on your phone. All right, I think we are at the last point, number 10. Number 10 is all of the above and you keep on doing it. It's not about just maintaining number one or number five. You have to ensure you're always in the state of flow. You know the sequence, you know, you know your goal, and you always know that every decision that you make has a consequence attached to it, and you plan it accordingly. Everything has a different way of working out in the world. So whatever you fancy, whatever you want to get this year in 2019, you have to ensure you can sustain that positivity, the feeling of being inspired every single day as much as you can and as much as it's practically possible to be in that zone, to feel that you're doing something important, to feel that whatever you are doing brings in nothing more than joy, content and peace in you. And like I always say, I think content is more important than happiness because happiness is so fleeting. You cannot be happy every single second of the day, but you can be content. So even if you're having a down day, that's all right. You always can't be, you know, you, there will be ups and downs. But I think the part that you have to remember is revisit your goals, look at it, and then see 2019 as something that is doable, that is for you and is written by you and it's impacted and influenced by none, unless you want somebody else to influence you. This is the year you own it to yourself. This is the year you dream. This is the year you get things done. So Happy New Year once again. And I do hope everything that you work for, everything that you wish for, 
does come true in 2019.